All right, everybody, in this video, we are going to go way off script by deviating from the scripts, but editing the scripts. Get it? Ah, okay. Yes, yeah, that's enough puns. I don't even, that's not even a pun. That's not even a legitimate pun. That's just a, I guess, some clever wordplay uh, using a colloquial, colloquialism. So let's, um, let's learn about editing the scripts. Now, here's the thing about editing the scripts. You can make games without editing the scripts. I've demonstrated that. If you look down on the tutorial page, you're going to see five five games that I made in 20 minutes each where I didn't even look or mention or think about scripts. Um, but he, the reality is, if you want to actually build a game, the game of your dreams, where it does custom things that you want them to do that are unique, obviously we, as the people building this module, these modules and these code bases, can't predict every single possible uh, you know, amalgam of things that you might want to do in your game. We just can't do it. So um, you're going to have to learn how to manipulate the scripts a little bit if you want to make something cool and unique. The good news is you don't have to spend years learning assembly language and all the quirks of the Nintendo Entertainment System because the fun, the foundation of the thing is already in place. So instead of writing, you know, 150,000 lines of code, you might have to learn how to erase a line here, add a line here, write a macro there, add a, add a macro there, change these two scripts, A, B them, see which one you like better, that kind of thing. So we're really taking so much of the work out of, of writing scripts unless you really want to. You could get to the point where you write an entire physics engine that works completely different than ours. So you can take it to that level too. You can write this from the ground up if you wanted to. Um, so you can you can get as, as involved or as, as, as least involved as you want in, in working with scripts and making your game completely unique. Uh, we're going to show you right now uh, just some basic script editing and how to access the scripts to make them do different things. What I did, what you're seeing on the screen right now, this is one of those 20 minute tutorials for the simple platformer. I went ahead and I loaded all the elements for it. Uh, you can go look at, if, if wherever you're seeing this video, if you go to newapeheroes.com and look for the 20 minute video tutorials, you'll see how to import all these assets and then build a quick screen out of them. So go check that out. Uh, I didn't want to waste time doing that. I'd rather waste time giving you this long introduction uh, monologue. Um, so I'm going to play real quick and everything's set up for me to, to move around, to jump, to be able to climb the ladders, all that stuff. All that came in with the, with the module stuff that I loaded. So that was really cool. Now let's pretend that you've done this. Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't set up my screen yet. So I need to tell it that I want my screen to use gravity and I want my edge to stop my player and I want to make this a single screen game. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to make sure that's saved. Yeah, OK. So now, I'm sorry. Now, when I press it, I have a little uh, game that's that's sort of reminiscent of that game with the plumber not the one with the lizard turtle thing the one with the donk with the monkey and the girlfriend instead of the dragon and the princess um so you know now i've got gravity and i can jump and this gravity is really floaty because it's meant to emulate that game so you can always change those settings Anyway, you can you can watch all about that in that tutorial. That's not why we're here. We're here to pretend you did this tutorial and now want to start making some changes to it. Um, let's pretend that I had a, I said, oh, you know, it'd be really cool. I want to make it an obstacle where, you know, you'd fall down the hole. Awesome. So I'm going to test that. And so I'm going to fall down the hole and I'm going to die because that's what I want my game to do. And so you're testing this out and you say, yet to do, I got my little rabbit and he jumps the hole and... Oh, wait a minute. That's not death. What just happened there? Oh, I went to the screen underneath me. I went to a screen that doesn't exist. I went to this screen right here. It actually moved me down a screen as if I was working uh, playing Battle Kid or, or a game comparable to that. I actually jumped to the next screen down and I didn't move because there's no gravity on the screen yet, right? So I want to change that. I want to make it so I, when I get to the bottom of the screen, I die. How do I do that? Well, uh, you could look in giant long physics codes, but what we did instead was we broke this script into so many different pieces. That there's so many little things that you can edit that are commonly accessed things. For instance, bounds handling. I want to change what happens when I get to the bottom bounds. And you can see it's running a script right now. All the bounds are. If I get to the right, if I get to the left, if I get to the top, if I get to the bottom. They're all right here. Well, I want to change what happens when I get to the bottom. So what I can do is I can navigate to new scripts. I can right-click here. I can go to System. 
Uh, I, these are all scripts. These are generally ones you're not going to touch. Where the ones you're going to touch mostly are are in the module scripts. And you know, there's AI scripts, hurt, win, lose, death scripts, input scripts, main scripts, movement scripts, object scripts, power ups, all kinds of things. This is a main script, and I even have a bounds handler folder here with these scripts. And I can even read main scripts, main scripts, bounds handler, and do bottom bounds. So this is what it's running right now. If I, for some reason, wanted to look at that script to see what it's doing, to try and understand why my bounds are behaving that way, I can hit edit, and it's gonna open it in my default text editor. So I have Notepad++ open. Some of you guys, this might just open in regular old Notepad, and some of you guys have even cooler you know, uh, code editing uh, software on your computer that it might open in. But here's the assembly data for what happens when I get to the bottom of the screen. That's really cool. I have this little chunk that I can now start to manipulate. But here's the thing. I don't want to manipulate this. I don't want to get rid of this. I don't want to change this. I want this to stay right where it is because other games in this module might use it. I want to make a custom thing that happens when I get to the bottom of the screen. So what I'll do is I'll just go to File, Save As, right? And I'm going to make a new folder here and I'll call it My Dumb Game and Inside My Dumb Game, I'm going to put do bottom bounds update death. And all death is going to mean for this game is just it's going to be a simple restart. So now the script I'm looking at is do bottom bounds update death, but I'm not pointing to that yet. I'm actually still pointing to do bottoms bound update. So let's let's uh let's actually edit the script. So in do bottom bounds update death, I'm going to select all Control A and delete. And I'm just gonna use this quick little shortcut, JMP, all capital letters, reset. And what that code does is it's just like pressing the reset button on your, your NES. So if I had a start screen, it would take me back to the start screen. If I don't, it's gonna take me back to the beginning of the game, whatever. Easiest way to handle death in, uh, in an S game. I'm gonna hit Control S to save it. Now it's not gonna work because I haven't set this to that. In fact, right now, if I play it, check it out. If I play the game, uh, and I get to the bottom. It's going to do the same thing that it did before because I have not changed the pointer, the script pointer. <clears throat> so, if I go down here, it still does the same thing, but now I want to change it. All right, no problem. What I could do is I can go into the settings and say, I want this instead to point to module scripts, main scripts, bounds handlers, my dumb game, and there's my script. So that's that's a different script. And if I hit edit, you'll see that's the one that comes up. Now the one that's associated with where that code happens uh, is, is going to reset the game. And let's test that. So now I've written my first assembly language code and used it in a game. It's, you know, <laughs> only a bunch of letters, but it's about eight letters, nine letters if you count the space, nine characters if you got the space. But if I fall now, Reset. Success. I have now written assembly code. I am a genius. I'm a madman. All right. So awesome. We've learned how to edit a script. Um, and that's that's super handy. There's a lot of things that you can start working with here. There are... <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry. Uh, God, I keep having this, I have this cough. Some of these you don't want to change. You don't want to change the root in doing this. Memory map, you don't want to change unless you are so proficient at assembly that you can actually read this stuff and understand it implicitly. Um, getting into like the physics script and the tile collision script, most of the time you're going to leave that all this stuff, you're going to probably leave mostly alone. However, you might change what happens when, I don't know, the game timer runs out. You might change what happens when there's no more monsters on the screen. So if I wanted to change what happens when I get rid of all the monsters, right now, if I get rid of all the monsters, it creates the victory object. That's what's currently loaded here, um, which then will take me to the, it'll advance me to the next screen. Um, but maybe I don't want to do that. In fact, I want nothing to happen if I collect no more monsters. This is not going to, I don't want to use this in my game. I'm making Legend of Zelda. I don't want to go to the quote unquote next level. It doesn't even make sense. Okay, I'm going to click on basic. I'm gonna to go to module scripts and I've got one called blank script in module scripts. That means that when it gets to this point of code, it's just gonna do nothing, which you're gonna want sometimes. So that's how you can make it do nothing. 
let's say you want to change what a power up does, right? You can see that some of these are just in the in the root module folder script here, and then there is some that are, there's one that's in the simple platformer because I wanted a certain power up, power up zero. I wanted that to actually do the make invincible code, and I didn't didn't want my other games to do that with this module. So I made I put it in this particular this special folder, and it made me invincible. Now, if I want to change what power up one does, I want it to give me health instead. I could then put uh, the the increasing of health instead of increasing score. Uh, code here and I'd make a copy of this so I didn't you know erase this and that kind of thing and eventually you're going to start build you know you're going to start snapping these to get these things together like lego pieces so we're going to give you a lot of legos in fact other users who are good at assembly language are going to give you a lot of legos but this is where you get to start constructing those legos to make the type of game that you want to make it behave the way you want to make it different from these tutorial games that we gave to you um, and you saw just with a couple of change just with a couple of clicks i dramatically changed how this game is played now you you cannot go to the bottom of the screen in this style game or you'll die but if i did allow you to i could make a game where you do navigate screen to screen like a mega man or a battle kid right so just even with a couple of clicks you can dramatically change the way that the game works and then of course you can always get super deep if you want to and get into things like the physics engine and start taking a look at what this actually does and what each of these uh, macros does. And we're going to talk about variables, constants, and macros in an upcoming tutorial. So thanks for watching. I hope that gives you some idea at least how to start to play around and not be so afraid to open up scripts and start tinkering and, and things like that. Because you can make a copy. You can iterate a script and then assign it just to see what happens. And if you don't like what it does, you can then set it back to the original. So this gives you the opportunity to start dipping your toe into assembly language without having to worry about creating a whole game to support it and not knowing sort of where the problems are. So uh, thanks for watching this one. And we're going to then start looking at um, how to uh, work with macros, variables, and constants.